What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO today, and today we're rocking Ultra Necrozma Malamar. Pretty cool deck here. I've got a list with some Mewtwo's in it, the Mewtwo promo with that ability, whatever it's called. Pressure. It's got pressure, and it decreases damage done to your Pokemon, so to your active and to your bench. Pretty cool when it's in the active position. Pretty good against Buzzwall. Definitely a neat card. And, you know, we've other than that, pretty uh, pretty standard list. We've got a couple Beast Rings in here. We've got two Dawn Wings in here. And let's see, I was playing a Clefairy in here for the Mirror. I think the Mirror is dying down a little bit. I think that Malamar decks are definitely like the least popular of the big three. Uh, just kind of that's like how I'm feeling things out. I feel like a lot of players are finding consistency issues with their Malamar decks, much like I have. So that's just uh, that's just my feelings, you know, on the decks as a whole. I think that this deck definitely a strong choice. I think that the deck gets a lot better post rotation. I think that you know, Psychic just has a very very bright future and has a lot going for it. I just think that things like Parallel City just got to go. Parallel City uh, and just Ability Lock Garbodor just hurt really, really bad for a deck like this. And they're both going to be gone. Greninja Break's going to be gone. Parallel City's going to be gone. Hallelujah. This deck is going to love all of that. So I think uh, here I actually don't really want to Mysterious Treasure away my Ultra Ball for a third NK like I could. Eh, let's do it. Fine. Let's do it. We'll go get ourselves a third NK. Though the th my like thing is, though, that uh, that if we get the third NK and we get rid of a Mysterious Treasure and an Ultra Ball to do it without getting any energy in the discard pile, like, knowing my luck, we're probably not going to get... All right, sure, we did get a letter here and a Sycamore, so we're good to go. I was concerned that perhaps we would not get a way to get, you know, some energy into the discard pile here. So we're fine, though. We got our letter. That's why we play them. Good stuff. So we can do that, get those, and then we can... Uh, mysterious treasure uh, one of them away get some energy in the discard pile that's good and then you know go from there so we got that I can get in the Crosby here my opponent might play parallel though I don't know what they play yet so I feel like I'm just gonna go get a Malamar just to have in my hand and then I'm just going to attach one of these here just to have it on there and then we're gonna pass so that's that's what I got right now. Reason I'm keeping the ma the Necrozma in the active position is because my opponent could knock out an Ink uh, pretty easily, actually. If they've got this Mew in the active position, if they're playing a Zorark deck, all they need to do is put down a Ram Zerua, put a DC on the Mew, and they'd knock out an Ink. That is annoying. Now, I probably would be able to punish the Mew very easily, but if I'm going to be able to punish the Mew, I'm going to be able to punish the Mew almost no matter what. I mean, if they do feel blower, this Floatstone turn one, that makes things a little bit more annoying for me. But then they just have to be packing the Field Blower turn one as well. So they would have to go like Field Blower, then I just have to find another Floatstone, which is annoying but not impossible to do. Also, I could just go get like a different attacker. So you see, yes, it would have been very easy for them to knock out an Inke, they just wouldn't need a DCE though. It is a little bit weird to maybe consider committing a DCE to a Mu EX in the active position against a Psychic deck. So I imagine if they have a way to retreat this Mu EX, they're gonna wanna do it. Yeah, they're gonna wanna get this guy out of there. This is probably their least preferred starter possible for a Zorak Lysipod deck, though I will say that they do play like two of them now. A lot of these Zorak Lysipod decks are playing two copies of Mew, meaning that you're going to be starting it more often than you used to, which is uh, really bad versus some decks. I know, I think Riley started a Mew versus me in top four of the League Cup, where we played most recently at the Nick Bailey Open, so I know he was not exactly stoked on that. Now, I could end my opponent, but heck no, we ain't going to do that. So we're just going to go and try to knock out this Mew. Now, we could go and Psychic Sphere the Mew for knockout. Yeah, big brain, right? And get this, uh, we could get this Dawn Wings out of here. I think I don't want to leave a Malamar in uh, the danger zone like that, though. So I'd rather not. 
I'd rather knock out this uh, Mew with anything other than this Ultra, this Dawn Wings in the active though. So we're gonna see what we could do. Ooh, this is great. Okay, so we've actually, you know, surprisingly got almost anything we could possibly want here, which is very good. We have, you know, Mysterious Treasure, we have Ultra Ball, and we've got Professor's Letter, so this is great. I think I have, what, one energy in the discard pile, one here, let's get that, and let's get that. I feel like we get both of these, and then we can Ultra, no, we need to get two Psychics. I am going in with the Mewtwo this turn. That's what I'm doing. So I'm not going to get the Metal Energy. I would love to like bench the Necrozma and get a Metal Energy on it, but I'm not doing that yet. Uh, I think I need to get, yeah, I need to get those. And then, so we're going to get these, and then we're going to Mysterious Treasure for a, um, for a Mewtwo, and we are going to Ultra Ball, you know, for a Malamar, which we need. So we need to Ultra Ball, go get ourselves a Malamar. That's good. And then we need a Mysterious Treasure as well to get the Mewtwo. So we're going to get that. That's good. Yes, yes, yes. And then I think, unfortunately, we might need to Mysterious Treasure away that Beast Ring. I don't want to do that. But that's kind of like where we're at. Unfortunately, this N is going to be very bad as well. I think, you know, my opponent could, like, just Guzma knock out this Dawn Wings, in which case Beast Ring is going to be very good. But I don't really have another option. I kind of have to just go on that. So, yeah, let's, let's Mysterious Treasure away the Beast Ring there. And then let's just go get ourselves the Mewtwo. And we're going to attack with this bad boy. Now, this guy is cool because he deflects knockouts from, like, everybody my opponent's got to throw at me, right? Like, they could do 120 damage with Golisopod. Mewtwo stops that, right? And it stops that 20 damage, so they're only doing 100. They could do 120 damage to me with Zoroark. Mewtwo stops that as well. So Mewtwo, just very, very good. I uh, love this card. Great here, getting the turn two knockout with Super Cybolt on the Mew EX. That's fantastic. Now, unfortunately, all I've got for next turn right now is an N, so I'm going to be ending myself to four. But sure enough, we ripped that Cynthia and an Ultra Necrozma. That's perfect. Now I'm in an ideal scenario, which I find myself rarely saying versus Zorark with these kinds of decks. However, if my opponent does parallel me here, I'm just going to bump my Dawn Wings Necrozma. Great, get him out of here. Don't need it, right? Sayonara, that's fine. And if uh, my opponent doesn't parallel me, that means I get to keep more bench space. So that's fantastic as well. I think I really put my opponent on the back foot here, and they really don't have a great option to deal with this Mewtwo. They can go in, and they promoted the, you know, they promoted the Lele. So either one of two things is about to happen. They're either about to Guzma and just like knock out this Dawn Wings, in which case I may be able to respond with my own Ultra Necrozma here if I get enough fire off of that Cynthia. However, you know, if they if I can't, then that's fine. I will just go and just, you know, we're promoting the Mewtwo. We'll just super cyborg the Zorark. Assuming they have Guzma here by the fact that they, yes, 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 they do have the Guzma. So good stuff. But my opponent does still not have a very solid board state. Like, they really don't have a lot going on. Uh, are they double puzzling here? Are they, I think they're double puzzling. I can never tell. Uh, with the animation if it's double or single. No, they are single. See, it flashed the puzzle twice, but they were single puzzling. They really don't have very much else. Uh, and they do parallel me here. Okay. All right, so they do get the parallel. This is bad. This was like my worst case scenario is that they parallel Guzman. I would have loved if they, and this is, oh, this is why things get so sketchy with Zorark all the time because they make you make these horrible decisions. So I think I have to, bump the Mewtwo actually because I really want to get those three energy in the discard pile there and then I have to more or less just hope that I get a float stone off this Cynthia and I think this list only runs three so that's what we're looking at here now I know my opponent just stacked their deck but I don't really care that's fine we need to draw some flames here so we're we're going in uh, my bench is limited. That's bad. I can't really rescue stretcher for anything meaningful. So we just got to drop this thing and go with the Cynthia. Can we draw the flames? No, we can't. 
No, we cannot, Andrew. All right, so we are going to be waiting a little bit longer there, but that's fine. I don't really think my opponent's got anything, like any sort of juice that they can do to knock out a Necrozma with 190 hit points this turn. So I think I should have, you know, one more turn here uh, to be able to kind of deal with things. I do have a field blower, so like that's good. I also could go get myself a Malamar to charge another energy on this thing, though I don't really think that that's necessary. I think I'm going to save it. I think I'm just going to field blower, get rid of that. Then I'm going to go in and ultra ball. Huh. Let's ultra ball. I think, I don't know, getting a third, getting myself a third psychic onto this Necrozma would be extremely good um, right now because then it would mean that I don't need to draw into a float stone or anything. I could just promote the Necrozma and then go get a metal, right? Which would be great. So I think I'm going to just get these. Uh, it's an interesting choice. I don't know. Uh, my options were to, oh, well, the decision's been made for me. I don't have another NK index. So I was thinking about just going and getting the NK. Uh, I probably should have just saved the, the field blower then, but that was like, that's just a little misplay on my part. That's fine. I think like I'm just going to get the Malamar then. This feels like wasteful, but I kind of just need it, all right? Because we only need to take two more prizes. So I need to get this, you know, Necrozma here juiced up as much as possible. And you can see why my friend Kevin Baxter really just decided to cut the whole Malamar situation out of this deck, right? Because he's like, I'm just going to hit my Beast Ring. He's going to play like four of those bad boys, right? I'm going to play four Max Elixirs. And then I'm going to play the Lunala Prism Star so that I could just manually accelerate to my Necrozmas and then just take six prizes the, you know, uh, take six prizes the hard way, right? Which is just uh, without accelerating, we're just going to, you know, get my energy in play and then go like Guzma, Guzma, Guzma and just like win the game that way, which is certainly a valid strategy. And he was able to do it to win the Nick Bailey Open, which is a cool strategy for sure. My opponent is going to bring up that Necrozma, right? So, like, I don't mind this at all. This doesn't bother me in the least. They're going to energy drive. That is totally fine. I've got Sycamore. I gave myself the best odds of being able to go, all right, we've got nothing to feel blower, so we're just going to Sycamore. Uh, I gave myself the best odds of being able to hit a Metal Energy here, and we got one, so that's fantastic. I can also play B-String. But I don't really have anything worth beast ringing to, right? So that's a little bit frustrating. I would really love if I had gotten a card to go search out my other Ultra Necrozma. That would have been very good. Now we're just in a sketchy situation where I definitely don't want to... Like, he's going down. I don't want to rescue Stretcher for my other thing back. I need to... Okay, uh, actually, can I, how many times can I psychic, I can psychic recharge twice. So actually, I can win this game because I can just rescue Stretcher for my own Ultra Necrozma back. So like, that's fine. I think I'm just going to charge up this Mewtwo twice. Uh, and then I should be able to have game with like free retreat, right? So like, that's my thought process. So we're going to do that. We're going to give this Mewtwo free retreat, right? And then we're going to use the Rescue Stretcher to bring back this Ultra Necrozma once it gets knocked out next turn. If my opponent doesn't do anything to stop me, I just have, like, game here. Now, they're knocking me out, so there's, like, really no point in keeping this Beast Ring because, like, that's just not going to matter. So I think I'm just going to... There's no real reason done. Yeah, I'm not going to get that metal energy to throw in there. Now, I think I should have not attached that metal energy and I should have beast ring to get the metal energy onto him from my deck. So like, ugh, I hadn't really thought of that yet. I wasn't really quite there, but that's like the technically correct thing to do. And it would have saved me, you know, one more metal energy in my hand. But I think I'm gonna win with this beast energy here just to, so I kind of have it no matter what, even if they knock out one of these Malamars. Like, I should be good to go. So let's just uh, Photon Geyser here. Uh, another weird option that I have to win this game is if my opponent does not evolve up either of those Zeruas on the bench, 
I can also go in, having Guzma here is fantastic. Now I like really have it because I just have like literally the rescue stretcher beast energy and then the psychic recharges just to end this game super quick. But I can win the game with Sky Scorching Light GX as well since we are now at the six or below prizes. And if my opponent doesn't evolve up either of those, which now that they're sycamoring, like they've got to evolve those up for sure. But since they are sycamoring, unless they play something crazy like red card, which uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's hope that that's not a thing. But unless they play something crazy like red card, then they can't really win this game. Even something like a counter catcher, there's no way the counter catcher would be able to do it because they can't take out anything on my side of the field that will prevent my win condition, condition which is just bringing this guy back and using Photon Geyser on a Pokemon GX for 210 damage. See, my opponent is dropping the EOS Soda. They're gonna try and stop me from winning with Sky Scorching Light, so that's good. They know I can't win that way. And yeah, but at this point, there's nothing more they can do. My opponent just got a horrible setup there, and we were able to kind of just capitalize. Starting the Mew EX there was really, really bad for my opponent. We got to kind of show off the Mewtwo there. We got off to a little bit of a, uh, did we get off to a slow start? No, I mean, I felt like we didn't get a turn two attack, but that's fine. This deck doesn't really need to get a turn two attack all the time since you are really just going for the late game, kind of like turn three, four, and five. You really just want to take like big knockouts on those turns instead. They decided to drop the other Zerua. So now if they don't have it, then I can Sky Scorching Light GX for game, which would be pretty nifty. However, I think I would rather just blow some guys up. I think that that would be the ideal situation because I think it's more fun to just, you know, to blow a bunch of guys up. Opponents going in with the Galisopod GX. They are just not aware of the fact that they just made my game win condition a lot easier, I think, by benching that Zerua because uh, yeah, they both got 60 hit points. So that's just uh, that's just the way that is. Don't even need the Rescue Stretcher. We got it right here. Let's just go Beast Energy, Psychic Recharge, Psychic Recharge, and we've got it. So cool stuff there. Good game to my opponent and definitely just, uh, you know, just a nice showing for the Ultra Necrozma deck altogether. Definitely a valid deck heading into the North American International Championships. This deck's very strong. I think it is better suited to beat Zorark decks. Like if I had to say, like definitely this version does better against Zorark decks than the All Psychic version. The All Psychic version has a bad time, like a really bad time against those uh, a bit against those Zorark decks. There's really just nothing they could do. So we're going to Photon Geyser here, just do things uh, the old-fashioned way. I could have Sky Scorching Light gx for Knockout as well on the two Zeruas. But good game to my opponent. Definitely a good showing there for the Necrozma deck. We did get paralleled tough that one time, but it's fine. We didn't. It doesn't really matter if you miss one turn with this deck since you are just going to be taking huge knockouts back to back to back to back. And I know once you get the Ultra Necrozma engine up and running, if your opponent hasn't done anything to stop it or slow it down, it is very hard for them to do anything about it. In fact, I was playing... What, I had a match earlier this week where I had, like, uh, you know, I was playing Zorak Elisabod, and my opponent just, like, went in with Metagross and Ultra Necrozma, and just turns three, four, and five, just, like, blew up my Zoroarks back to back to back, and you're just sitting there like, eh, all right, there's nothing I could do about that. So this list is pretty cool. I'm pretty stoked on it, honestly. Like, I think, like, this is just, like, a solid you know, pretty consistent list here. It uh, kind of is taking Zach Taylor's list and kind of just, you know, pushing it into a new direction. I feel like a similar direction, but kind of a new space here. I like the Mewtwo's a lot better than the Mew and the Mimikyu. I think they add a lot more to the deck than Mew and Mimikyu do. Uh, I actually am a fan of the Beast Rings. They're growing on me in this deck. I wish there were more. That's kind of how I feel about it, uh, which I think is how Kevin Baxter ended up getting to just the K-Box version of this deck where he just took out the Malamars all together. Because like, when you have like Ultra Necrozma and Beast Ring, you're like, wow, yeah, we should be doing this more often. This is very good. So, you know, that's kind of the natural extension of that. So thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub the channel. Let me know what do you guys think of Ultra Necrozma in the comments below. Peace.